Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. Now, there is no doubt that cancer is one of the worst things to befall us. It is an awful condition. It doesn't care about your background. You can be rich, poor, male, female, black, white, Tory, Labour, does not matter. It's just, to put it bluntly, shit. And it will affect about one in three people around the world at some point in their life. And for some people, it will be the last thing they get because by the time they get detected, it will be stage four. It's terminal and it's far, far too late. The secret with cancer, of course, is early diagnosis and then immediate treatment. These are the best things you can do. Catch it early, treat it hard, treat it fast and move on. And with a report showing that there's going to be a 20% increase in cancers in Scotland over the next 15 to 20 years, you'd think that the SNP would put a very rigorous plan into action to ensure that the resources are there, the facilities are there, the staffing is there to treat this awful condition that is going to affect increasingly more people over time. You'd like to think that. You really would. But that isn't actually what's happening. Let's take a look at this article and see what is happening. And it isn't good. Here goes. So cancer cases in Scotland set to rise by 20% by 2040, just 17 years away, uh, as the SNP told to rip up its flimsy NHS plan. It's not fit for the purpose. Uh, a rise of more than a fifth is expected within 20 years. And the SNP's health secretary, Michael Matheson, has no time to lose. Or uh, he's, he's got no talent to use, to be fair. He's not very good at his job. They've never had good health secretaries, have they? Um, critics are warning after this deeply alarming new report. Uh, the number of Scots being diagnosed with cancer is forecast to increase by almost a quarter in less than two decades. A report has revealed as the SNP come under pressure to deal with the NHS's ticking time bomb. The average number of cancer cases is forecast to increase from more than 34,500 cases in 1921, 19, year 2019 to 2021, not 1921, um, to more than 42,000 cases in 2038 to 2040. A new report from Public Health Scotland using models developed by Cancer Research UK said the number of cases on all forms of the disease, excluding non-melanoma skin cancer, was predicted to rise by 22%. It's a lot, isn't it? And they don't have the facilities, they don't have the resources, and they don't have the money to treat it. Cancer is a very expensive condition to treat. The chemicals are sometimes experimental. They, the research that goes in there makes them expensive. Uh, it's very time consuming if you keep having to go back and forth to hospital for uh, all sorts of chemo or radio radiation therapy and things like that. So it can be um, a very expensive condition. Um, fortunately for most people, they'll either have that covered by the NHS or if they're fortunate enough um, by uh, health insurance, which um, I will say, if you have health, private health insurance for cancer, you have a much, much higher rate of survival. Um, this is because they tend to catch it early. You can go in, they'll give you immediate treatment. You get seen immediately uh, and they can use various uh, medicines and, uh, and stuff that the NHS won't fund. So, um, yeah, it is a case there that who pays lives sometimes when it comes to cancer. Uh, anyway, this is this rise is mainly due to the growing population and the fact that it's growing older. Uh, and as a result, cancer cases per 100,000 people in Scotland are expected to rise from 629 uh, to 640. But over the same period, cases amongst men are, rise, are going to rise from 695 per 100,000 to 739 per 100,000. Um, why men, I hear you ask? It's because men are becoming more aware uh, of prostate cancer uh, and are going to see the doctor earlier. But also, when men get older, and it's one of the things uh, us men know, uh, it becomes more likely to get it. Uh, and so as you as the population ages, there's more going to be more men with prostate cancer. I had a checkup recently and uh, my doctor gave me the thumbs up. Sorry, uh, I can do a I can laugh about it. I have been checked. I'm good. 
thankfully. Uh, and to be honest, it's not that anymore, gentlemen. Uh, and ladies who know gentlemen, I'm, just, I'm not going to be honest. Um, it's something I've touched on before. <laughs> God, the puns. Uh, but it isn't, um, you know, finger up the, the rear end anymore, up your fundament. Uh, it is just a small prick. They write themselves. They take a drop of blood and they test it for your PSAs. Honestly, you've got filthy minds, you lot. Anyway, Scottish Conservative Deputy Health Spokeswoman Tessa White said, this projection is deeply alarming, both for the public and for those who work in the NHS. Yeah, it's, it's bad for everyone, because whether you're in the public or the NHS, you've got an equal chance of getting it. Uh, cancer waiting times are already out of control due to SNP mismanagement of the NHS, she said, and without greater demand being placed on our health service. Cancer patients are continuing to suffer due to dire workforce planning by successive SNP health secretaries and Hamza Yousaf's flimsy NHS recovery plan, which has failed to remobilise frontline services post-pandemic. To be fair, and it isn't just the NHS in Scotland. I mean, what he's done and what the SNP have done to the NHS in Scotland is unforgivable. Um, they have absolutely ruined it, but it isn't just there. It's Wales, Northern Ireland, and of course, England as well. It is everywhere. It's getting overwhelmed. Um, it just needs more resources. And it certainly needs more resources for the big ones, the big Cs, the cancers of the world. That is when money definitely needs to be put in there. Cancer and heart care. They're the two big ones. Anyway, she said, we urgently need a new strategy to deal with this ticking time bomb. Michael Matheson must urgently rip up that recovery plan and match the Scottish Conservative ambitions, blah, blah, blah. And she politicises and I'm not fussed about that. Anyway, the projections are based on historical trends in cancer incidents, together with population estimates and projections for Scotland. According to the report, lung, breast and bowel cancers are predicted to continue to be the most form common forms of the disease. Now, I'm not surprised. Um, Scotland still has the highest rate of smoking, I think, um, in terms of, not in numbers, not in sheer numbers, but in terms of uh, percentages. Um, it's got the highest rate of smoking. Um, and of course, bowel cancer, food, isn't it? It's food related usually. Uh, and all that fried food isn't, uh, isn't great. And of course, very salty. Uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland have a predilection for salt and a lot of salt in their food. Um, it's something that uh, I must wag my finger at because I do too. Um, I do love a lot of salt in my food. Uh, and I have made a point of trying to cut it back. But there's some food. Chips and boiled egg. You cannot eat either of them without lashings of salt. Um, but, you know, when you put your salt into other stuff, you think, oh, do you need it? There's other, other, other seasoning is available. Uh, anyway, it added, while welcome reductions in smoking prevalence have occurred in Scotland, there remains considerable potential to prevent cancers through further reductions in smoking, reducing uh, overweight and obesity, improving diet and reducing alcohol consumptions. Well, I'm, I'm very good. I, I drink usually about once a week. Sometimes I'll have a second one, but it's that's it. Uh, I used to drink a lot, and now I don't. Um, and I've noticed there's a big difference there. Uh, and I smoked 40 a day for 30 years. Could, a, I couldn't afford to do it now. Uh, and B, I just have no requirement to. I've given that, I broke that habit. Nearly killed me, honestly. Uh, climbing the walls, but I did it. It's hard. If you're a smoker, I can understand how hard it is. I've been there. Try and give it up, but by God, we know it's hard. Uh, but smoke, of course, is the big one for cancer. It is absolutely the big one. But cutting your booze back a little bit and not eating crap food. That's the other one. That's the other thing I've had to force to do. I do uh, all nice homemade food now. Um, ever since my health scare a few weeks ago, for, well, a couple of months ago now, ever since my health scare, um, I have eaten healthy food. I don't eat any processed food um, or at least as, as little of it as I possibly can. Uh, and I feel so much better for it. Um, and I'm, again, it's, just, it's sometimes it's hard. You haven't got the time to prepare it. I get it. But, you know, it's anything better than how I was, you know. But cancer, it, cancer sneaks in through every door you let it. And if you smoke, you drink and you eat shit, you're going to get cancer, aren't you? Uh, anyway, in a statement, uh, sorry, no, sorry, I misled that. Scottish Liberal Democrat leader and health spokesman Alex Cole Hamilton said, the SNP government have no time to lose. No government. You've got to help them. Whatever they suggest, just vote with it. Don't vote against get something sorted. 
He said in the statement he wrote, many Scots diagnosed with cancer are being forced to wait day after day for help they need. This is true. When they eventually get to a doctor, because they've got that niggle and the doctor finally tells them to go to see a, a, um, an oncologist, and then they go and they wait, and they can be waiting weeks to see an oncologist, and then the oncologist does the results. It could be another two weeks before you get the results. Meanwhile, it could be six weeks from first to uh, results, from first notice into results. That six-week wait, that can kill you. And then it might be another four, two, three weeks before you even start treatment. This way, you could be you could be, be almost three months, and that could be the difference between life and death. Uh, and that's that's that shouldn't be the case. If you've got some kind of niggle and they think it's cancer, it should be seventy-two hours for a test, results within seventy-two hours after that treatment to begin within seventy-two hours of that. So the most you're waiting is ten days, effectively. You shouldn't wait 10 days, uh, any more than 10 days before starting treatment. And that that, will, that alone will save so many lives. Uh, access to screening programmes, particularly in rural areas, can be difficult. And to ensure patients receive early intervention, it is vital that the government stamp out this postcode lottery. Indeed, you know, getting out there, having cancer vans. And it sounds like camper vans. We could use the camper van as a cancer van and bring these things out and get people to line up like they used to do. Um, you remember the old mobile libraries and things or whatever. And you just come, or the mobile blood banks and things like that. You just come along, boom, they can give you the test. Draw the blood and give you a, a cancer test. It takes two minutes per person, three minutes at most, top. You go in and it's they have the pre-listed name, address, you know, bang. Put the tab on, suck some blood, pop it in the jar, and it off goes and then they just do it and give you the results back it's not difficult it should be planned and everyone i think i think it should be every two years every citizen should be entitled to a cancer check cancer test for blood certainly if you're a man and you're over 50 get your psa counted seriously and like i say that's just a little blood blood test uh, a Scottish government spokesman said cancer is a priority for the Scottish government and the nhs they say this but hey they're not acting on it uh, and it remains on increasing survival rates across all cancers. Well, they talk the talk, but they're not walking the walk, you know, and they're not putting the funds in. They're not building the resources. They're not building specialist cancer units. They're not developing specialist cancer teams. And they're certainly not doing the mass screenings that are needed to stop, you know, generally the big, the big sort of four or five cancers should be tested. I mean, I know women, you get your breast screening uh, done uh, and uh, men over 50, I can't remember if it's 50 or 55 now, can get the PSA done on demand. They're the two big ones, obviously, but all the others, they can still pick them up in blood tests. Do it, do it, save lives. Anyway, I'll stop there and come up. It's a horrible subject um, and it's something that can be helped. Anyway. Yeah, it's a side effect, I suppose. It's a function of growing old uh, is your increasing risk of cancer. And of course, as we grow old uh you know it's, it's humanity sort of ages ages out it's going to happen a lot more it's going to happen a hell of a lot more uh, and so plans need to be put in place and any health secretary who's not planning for it isn't doing his or her job but then you've just got to look back at the health secretaries that the nhs have had uh, sorry the nhs have had that the smp has had over the years they're all pretty bad aren't they they've all been awful one way or another and still continue to be awful anyway i'll stop there thank you very much for watching we have a different one this one um a bit rambly I do apologize uh, i do tend to go off on tangents as the day goes on my mind wanders see i'm off on one again stop it till next time stay safe stay well go and get yourself checked especially gentlemen who are over a certain age go along get your blood test uh, it's not the old days of the old um finger up the rear end or anything like that anyway thank you bye bye